Hi, everybody. It's April. It's, uh, we're into April. It's April 5th? 5th. Uh, wines will be available tomorrow, the 6th, uh, for those of you who look at the videos. Uh, three wines again. And uh, it's kind of a, it, it's a crazy time, isn't it, for everybody? It's uh, <laughs> There's so much going on. Uh, but there's good things going on, too, and good things happening. Let's talk about wine. So pretty cool. Uh, Valerie and I have a piece in this month's Travel and Leisure. And what makes it even cooler is that it's on Vermont wine scene. See that? Look, Valerie Stivers, Hank Zona, Ellison Estates. And what else is in there? La Garagista is in there. Stella 14 and Shelburne Vineyard, Vineyard Iapetus. And that's a picture of uh, Shelburne Vineyard right up there in the upper right hand corner. Cool tasting room and uh, patio outside, and some folks picnicking there in Shelburne. So, uh, why I show that is because uh, it's, it's really cool to, to be in travel and leisure. I, I, I'm not quite pinching myself, but uh, this ability to, to write and partner with somebody and to um, you know get in a publication like that and and talk about wine, especially wine that's not often talked about, is um, is a pretty cool thing. It's, it's cool to uh, reach reach new people. Uh, it's really cool to reach all of you every month too. So um, one of the things I really wanted to do was see if I could get a Vermont wine for us, and uh, you got one this month. Here's the Iapetus. Iapetus is, uh, and it gives you a little like geological map on there. So we are we are breaking some ground here right now. So Iapetus is uh, a side project made by Ethan Joseph, who's the winemaker at um, at Shelburne Vineyards. Shelburne Vineyards, one of the first vineyards that opened in Vermont, growing almost all hybrid grapes. They grow a little bit of Riesling. Uh, and there's a little touch of Riesling in this, but this is made primarily from La Crescent. La Crescent is a hybrid grapes. Um, some people, including uh, the winemaker, believe that this is the future of, of winemaking. And it's a valid argument because uh, th these are grapes that are bred to uh, to be cold resistant or heat resistant or drought resistant or mold resistant, uh, things that are that are kind of plaguing the wine world these days, uh, weather, climate. So, um, so this is a pretty cool, uh, this is a pretty cool thing. And, um, uh, you know, going up there to research it and talking to these like incredibly smart and passionate and innovative people at, at all these different wineries. But the trick is getting the wine here in New Jersey and finding it distributed. And I, I finally was able to like, uh, beginning of the month, a, a, a bunch of the Iapetus, uh, came in through one of the small boutique wholesalers. And uh, I think I made her day. I said, you know, how many cases do you have all together? She said 18. And I said, great, give me five. So, um, so this is, it's kind of fun. It's kind of fun to, to, to have this wine. So it is a hybrid grape. So it's our first hybrid grape wine. Uh, as you can see from the color, it is a orange wine. So it is a La Crescent, a hybrid grape wine that is made with skin contact, and that's where it gets that orange color. That is not any type of an, an additive um, to that. Um, it's uh, it's actually got some kick to it. Fourteen and a half percent alcohol. Uh, one of the things about hybrids is that they can they have longer hang time and ripening time, so they can they can withstand some early frosts. So you got some more ripeness in this thing too. Uh, there's gonna be some richness to this wine. There's gonna be some funkiness to it. You'll also notice it's cloudy. Don't freak out. There's some sediment on the bottom. See that there? A little bit of sediment. I would chill this and chill it standing straight up uh, and pour it off carefully. But if you get a little sediment in the, in the bottom, uh, it's not going to kill you. Um, so pretty cool. Pretty cool. Um, pretty cool wine, I think, to, to have. Uh, the other thing that's cool about it is that... Um, the winemaker uh, is actually going to be our guest on right now. It appears on the 18th, Monday, the 18th for the April Zoomer. So uh, it's, it's a crazy month with breaks and, and various holidays and people going on trips and the event world is starting to, uh, 
swing back into action. Uh, but it looks like it will be Monday the 18th, and we'll hear all about Vermont and Iapetus. And uh, so you can save your wine till then if you want. If you want to drink it, I mean, this is um, orange wines. Orange wines, don't fear them. Uh, orange wines are wines that are white wines with some little more more spine, a little more a little more backbone to them. Uh, that skin contact kind of gives them a little a little more oomph, takes it from being something a little bit lighter. So, uh, so, you know, so I like orange wines with, um, uh, you know, again, I think orange wine goes great with a Thanksgiving style dinner. So, you know, think of like a dark meat um, bird kind of a thing, dark meat chicken, if, if you want to. Um, uh, some sides that have some spice to them that have a little more, um, uh, you know, a little more going on on the plate. You know, this is not um, a fine, um, light chicken or light seafood kind of wine. Like I said, there, there's more going on here. There's a little more body going on here. You do get citrus. You do get some earthiness and mushroominess. Um, this is a good spring wine. This is a good spring food wine. Uh, it should stand up to some some vegetables. It'll stand up to some things that are earthy, like, uh, you know, think of it as uh, like a beet dish would probably uh, uh, something with beet, something with mushrooms, lighter mushrooms uh, would go with this. Uh, so, um, you know, again, chicken, uh, meatier seafood, um, uh, pork dishes, again, something a little more spice, a little more heat, uh, not like a big giant kind of a meal, um, or, or heavy, heavy duty, full body kind of a, a meat dish, but, um, something that's more light, to, light to medium on the meat side, medium to fuller bodied on the fish side. Um, try it or, um, save it for the 18th. And I'm um, curious to know what you think. I, I went, I, I'll admit, um, this is, a, you know, not that it's experimental. I've had this wine. I have this wine in my cellar. Uh, I really like this wine. I was really impressed when I tasted it. Uh, but, um, you know, enough that I actually bought it for myself after I tasted it back last summer when uh, up in Vermont. But it's, um, you know, it may not be to everyone's taste, but I'm here to expose you to new things. So there you go. That is wine number one.